Hi folks and welcome to Attica Armory. So today we're going to be doing another installation in our Handguns 101 series. And this video is going to be all about how to grip your pistol. Now there's all kinds of different methods out there. People have adapted things over the years. There's some that are really good. There are others that are so-so. Eh, I want you to make sure that you always feel free to adapt to anything that you see in this video to fit you. Everybody's kind of got different size and shape hands. Everybody's kind of got a different size and shape gun. So always feel free to kind of change things up a little bit. But we did want to give you a good baseline to get started if you're new to handguns or if you're just kind of looking to try something a little bit different. So we're going to be covering three different techniques today. The first one is going to be a standard two-handed grip with arms fully extended and that's kind of going to be more of a sporting slash target shooting stance. The second is going to be more of a close quarters kind of tactical type of position again using two hands but with the arms not quite fully extended with a gun a little bit closer to your body so that you're more capable of keeping that in your possession when you're in sort of a, a dangerous close quarter situation and lastly for the third position we're going to do single-handed grip and we're going to do it with our strong hand and our weak hand just to show you what it looks like to shoot with a single hand only just in case you only have one hand available. So for today's demo I'm going to be using a Glock Model 34 this is a third generation Glock and you can see here that I've got my slide locked open so I can see inside and make sure that it's empty and I'm actually using a training magazine and all of the ammunition has been removed from the training area so we can make sure that we're safe. I'd recommend that you guys put your gun into this kind of a condition before you get started just so that you can be absolutely sure that your gun's unloaded while you're training at home. So you're going to be hearing me talking about strong hand and weak hand. I'm referring to obviously, you know, if you're right handed, your right hand is your strong hand, your left hand is your weak hand or supporting hand. So that's kind of going to be the order of things as we go forward. So before we jump into the individual different methods, let's talk about one thing that's going to be universal across all of them. And that's the position of your strong hand or in the case of shooting only with one hand on your weak side, it's going to also apply over there. And that's your main grip on the actual frame of the gun. So what you want to do is you want to take the web of your hand here and you want to choke it up as far as you can like that without actually going up over the top of the beaver tail or the tang or whatever you want to call that. And you can see here how the webbing of my hand actually kind of bunches up a little bit like that. The reason I want to do that is I want my hand to be as far up as I can get it as close to that bore axis as possible. So that makes the recoil come straight back into my arm as opposed to if I've got kind of a, a loose grip down here and I've got this great big gap that you can see here what ends up happening is that gun wants to pivot during recoil and that ends up leading to things called limp wrist failures and limp wrist failures are just a nasty little thing and that, that happens when that slide doesn't come back far enough to properly eject that previous round and to properly load the next round. And the way to cure those limp wrist failures is to get all the way up in there like that, get nice and snug with it, and we want that grip high and tight. Next thing we want to do is we want to place our index finger straight forward like this, right onto the frame just above the trigger guard. The reason we keep it here instead of down here or worse yet on the trigger is that if we're in some kind of a situation a, you know a dangerous situation we don't want to come around a corner or something and get startled and accidentally yank our finger into that trigger just out of you know just being frightened so we keep it up here this gives us a nice solid firm backing and of course if I need to I can always get my finger on there 
just as quickly as I need it. So next is lower down on the grip frame here. You can see here that I've got my next three fingers firmly gripping at the bottom of the grip frame. Now some firearms are not going to have enough room for you to get your pinky on there. So it's okay to actually wrap your pinky around the bottom of the gun. Actually a lot of guns are specifically designed to be shot that way. But you can see here on the Glock Model 34, I've got plenty of room, so that's where I want my fingers. And here's how it looks on the other side. Please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And remember to keep those guns running clean and smooth with a bottle of our Attica Armory Citrus Powered Synthetic CLP. You can find out more by visiting us at AttagaArmory.com. So let's look at our first method, and this is kind of a more traditional target type method. So I'm going to start with that same hand position that I showed you as a base foundation with your strong hand. Then what I want to do is I want to wrap my supporting hand right up underneath our trigger guard right here, right underneath it, pressing firmly up against the bottom of that trigger housing. Now over on my left side where my thumbs are at, being that I'm, I'm right handed, that's where my thumbs are going to be located over on the left, I'm going to actually stack my strong hand thumb right on top of my weak hand thumb. And my weak hand thumb is going to be kind of pivoted forward. I'm extending that hand forward just like this. And actually on the Glock, you've got this little takedown switch area here. That's actually for me a pretty nice little reference point of where I want my supporting hand thumb to be. And my strong hand thumb is just resting right over the top of it. That way I can keep it off of that slide stop and slide release. And I've got a nice, good, firm, comfortable place to rest that. From there, I'm gonna extend my arms forward all the way. Now, I'm not locking my elbows. I always like to have my elbows soft, my knees soft. That way I can kind of absorb the recoil and I can kind of go with the flow and I'm not having to get hard shocks from being you know, too locked up. But nonetheless, I am fully extended all the way out. That way I've got a nice, precision sight picture where my sights are small, they're far away, and everything is just a little bit more precise. All right, so here's the frontal view of how that looks, and here's my strong side view of how that looks. You can see here that I'm pulling back with my supporting hand, and I'm pushing forward with my strong hand, so I'm creating kind of a vice grip on this pistol and that'll help me manage that recoil so this gun's not flipping around all over the place. Now once I'm all gripped up and everything's looking good I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I line my sights up onto my target. I'll make sure and leave you guys a link in the description on our sight alignment video so you can check that out as well. But once you get your sights lined up, once you're on target, you can go ahead and place your finger on the trigger. Mm -hmm. So let me talk to you a little bit about trigger finger placement. And there's a couple of different schools of thought on this subject. So I, for most of my life, was raised and taught and trained to always put the middle of this first section of my finger right here on this little soft part on the trigger. And, you know, that served me pretty well for most of my life. Um, didn't have any real problems with it. It's a great position for precision shooting, especially with lightweight triggers. You know, uh, single stage, single action, or really light two stage um, single action triggers. Excellent place for that. However, uh, later in life, I kind of learned that you know, you can't take a one-size-fits-all approach to trigger finger placement. So uh, I actually learned a little bit of a technique from somebody that trained me at Fort Benning uh, that with heavier, particularly things like mil-spec um, M16 type triggers, or they might be up in the 8-9 pounds range, possibly 10 pounds if you're the unlucky guy that gets a real nasty one. Um, I like to get a little bit more finger 
in that trigger. So instead of just using that soft little meaty portion right there, I'm actually gonna kind of bring my trigger finger in a little bit farther to where I'm closer to that actual knuckle. And this actually works really well for me on longer, kind of heavier, mushier triggers like you might get on a Glock or any other uh, double action only handgun or like I said um, heavier mil spec type uh, rifle triggers so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put my finger in there just like that and I want to show you guys what happens watch watch this portion of my trigger finger watch the difference now if I'm out here where I'm just using that little itty bitty tip you can see that I'm kind of I'm kind of straining a little bit here. It's not that it's hard, but it's just a little bit less natural for me. Now, when I get my finger in that trigger just a little bit farther, I'm actually in a more natural position. My trigger finger right here is just kind of more relaxed, and I'm able to kind of bring that thing back and squeeze it with a lot less effort. I guess I just maybe have more leverage right there. So just something to think about. Try both methods and see which one works best for you. So once again, here's what my trigger squeeze is going to look like. And here's a shot from the supporting side. All right, so let's look at our second method for close quarters combat. And really, this is just an adaption of the first method with a couple of minor tweaks to make it better suited for, for up close and personal types of confrontations. Mm -hmm. So once again, our strong hand is gonna grip the gun exactly the way I showed you at the beginning. Mm -hmm. This time, there is gonna be some key differences in our thumb positioning though. So I'm actually gonna keep my thumb in this position right here into this little divot. And then I'm gonna bring my supporting hand right back up there, right underneath that trigger guard. But this time, instead of having my thumbs on top of each other like this, I'm actually gonna be crisscrossing. So I'm gonna have my supporting hand thumb in a crisscross pattern and it's gonna be basically pointing straight up in the air, just like this. Now the reason for this thumb positioning has less to do with your thumbs than it does actually with your arms and your elbows. When my thumb is like this, pointing straight up in the air, that enables my elbow to drop straight down like this and for that gun to be closer to my body. So when I'm fully extended, I've got my thumbs rolling out and pointing forward, but then when I get up close and personal, I'm dropping that down in here. That way I can kind of move around, I can pivot, I can get into the low ready, and then I can bring it up to fire quickly. So here's a look at that position from the supporting side. All right, so here's a close-up view of that supporting side. So once again, I'm keeping away from that slide stop and slide release and I've got a little bit of a gap there. I'm not gonna let my thumb rest up here on top of the slide, and I'm definitely not ever gonna wrap my thumb around the back of the gun like this. And once again, here's how that looks from our strong side. And again, I'm pushing forward with my strong hand, and I'm pulling back with my supporting hand to create that vice grip. So one other reason I don't like to have my finger here has to do with leverage and, and actually counterbalancing against the recoil. So what happens when you shoot your gun, it actually kind of pivots, it rotates on an invisible axis that's somewhere around here. It, it's, it's coming back like this and look what's happening on my grip frame. My grip frame is actually going forward, right? So my hand is here. The axis is probably somewhere close to where my hand is at. The gun wants to move up like this. And what that does is that actually pushes my grip frame forward. And the way I see it and the way I, I feel it when I'm actually kind of focusing on this is that I have more leverage down here trying to pull 
this back than I do here with my index finger trying to keep it from actually rising like this by pulling on it. So try those two different ways and try to be conscious of it and see if you can kind of pick up on what I'm talking about there. But generally speaking, I like to have all of my fingers down here at the bottom so that I can keep that grip frame from wanting to go forward during recoil. All right, so let's talk about our third and final method, and that is the single-handed shooting method. So we really never know when we might only have one hand available. So it's always good to train with just one hand and see, you know, see how you do in a controlled environment. Also, you're going to want to train with your strong hand and your weak hand. I know it's tough for folks, but I'm telling you, if you can knock it out a few times on the range, you know, even if it's only one magazine every time you go out, you'll see your, your technique improves over time. So we're gonna start off with our standard single-handed grip that I showed you at the beginning of this video. We're gonna be choked up nice and firm up here. So we got our, uh, we've got the web of our hand bunched up and we've got a nice, good, firm, solid grip on there. When I bring the gun up to my line of sight, you'll notice that if you keep the gun perfectly vertical, straight up and down, you're actually kind of gonna be straining. You're kind of forcing your elbow down. You're kind of forcing your whole, you know, you're kind of pinching your shoulder blades together and, and you're really in kind of a, an unnatural position here. So what I like to do instead is I like to allow a more relaxed and natural position where I'm tilted at about five degrees off dead center vertical. So I'm kind of more like this. And what that ends up doing is that lets my whole arm relax. That lets my elbow get into a more natural position, lets my back relax a little bit, and it just lets me get into a more comfortable position so I can shoot without straining. So here's the same deal on my left side. Uh, basically, I'm just gonna kinda slightly tilt it. Now, I'm not going full-blown, you know, gangsta. Um, I'm just ever so slightly, like I said, maybe five degrees off-center. Now, bear in mind, uh, at very long distances, this can affect your point of impact. But boy, at practical handgun distances, like say out to 25 yards, it's not gonna make a bit of difference. Just aim like you would be aiming at anything else and from a combat accuracy perspective you'll be just fine. One other thing I wanted to mention is when you're shooting with just one hand what do you do with your supporting hand when it's not supporting anything? Now you guys might think I'm kind of weird or OCD or whatever but I, I am one of those guys kind of like you know that old episode of Seinfeld where he's talking about you know not knowing what to do with his hands yeah like he needs some pockets or something you know I can't I can't be a nudist I think wasn't it he was talking about being a nudist or something like that um, so you know I need pants so I can stick my hands somewhere same deal here if I'm out here shooting with one hand, I need this hand doing something just to get it out of the way rather than just sitting around. So I'm going to hang it maybe on a belt loop down here. I might stick it in a pocket. I might uh, wrap it back behind my back over here. So either way, just try doing something to kind of anchor that supporting hand. So once I get my sights lined up, I'm going to go ahead and place my finger in that trigger guard and on the trigger and I'm going to squeeze it nice and easy. And from the strong side. So that about wraps it up today, folks. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. We hope it was helpful and informative and we definitely hope you stay safe and have lots of fun out there. So we'll see you again next time at Attica Armory. I like to get a little bit more finger in that trigger. So, <laughs> yes, pun intended. All right. <laughs>